What's up, everybody? I am DJ Casio, and welcome to Talking All That Cas. Now, what is Talking All That Cas? Real quick, breaking it down before I even get to that, let me tell you this. You want to know anything, you want to connect with me on social media, go to this address right here www.djcasio.com. All right? All my stuff's up there Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, all that good stuff is up there. Okay? Now, for 27 years, over 27 years, I've been hosting a weekly radio show here at 90.9 FM KHTC in Salinas, California. Every one of the shows I've ever done that's in my library is now online. You can go to this address right here, mixcloud.com forward slash DJ underscore Casio to hear all the shows, all the music, all the interviews, everything. Okay? Now, speaking of interviews, Maybe you don't have the time to go to Mixcloud and listen to the full shows because there's thousands of hours of stuff to listen to. If that's the case, this is what Talking All That Cows is for. I've isolated all the interviews, taken the interview clips, put them in video form, and I'm posting them up here on YouTube for you guys to check out in a shorter time. All right? So you can just go, pick out whatever interview you want to check out, and here it is, okay? So, without further ado, let's see what I got in store for you this time around. Hi, this is Marco. Hi, this is Angel. And this is Caroline. And we're the Cover Girls. The Cover Girls. The Cover Girls. Hola, this is Yolanda Ruiz. Hi, we're Seduction. Hey, this is Sapphire. 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 Hey, this is Pico Ortiz. Hey, DJ Casio, this is your girl, Naisha. Yo, what's up? This is Noel S. House of Holics. House of Holics. House of Holics. What's up, everyone? This is Sharon Masterin, and you're listening to DJ Casio on 90.9 KHDC. That is indeed the station you're listening to right now. Yours truly, Casio, in the building. It's 90.9 FM. KHGC Radio Bilingue here in Salinas, Santa Cruz, and Monterey. Also 104.1 FM if you're out there in Hollister, San Juan Batista, or South Gilroy. And you know we're streaming live everywhere on the planet at WednesdayRec.com. Real quick, running back the last half hour of music, Cynthia Figueroa, Look Inside My Heart. DJ MDW featuring Lisette Melendez, Drop the Needle. Quad LeBay, Spread Your Wings. Chrissy Ais, All These Memories. George Anthony featuring Cynthia, You Should Have Told Me. The Santana Twins featuring Susan Santiago, Return to Me. Isis with Through the Night. And Willie Valentine, Dedicate My Love. Man, oh man, I'm telling you, it's a, uh, it's another, uh, another hot show right here. Yours truly. Uh, getting ready to talk to my very special guest. Some people now refer to her as the girl next door. Uh, others refer to her as the queen of dreams. I want to know where all these aliases came from. Uh, Miss Sharon Masarin. Hi, DJ Casio. What's going on, my friend? How are you? Uh, I'm very, very well, thank you. And I'm actually even better because I just heard your show. And this was probably one of my favorite sets I've heard you play. I was uh -huh. super stoked. On fire. Oh well, the music. I, I I I appreciate such high praise from <laughs> uh, from someone of of uh, royalty status. Um, Thank you. you know, I, I saw that uh, posted up, and I thought, is she delving into a new dimension of creativity with this? What a uh, how and and will the uh, Queen of Dreams persona manifest uh, in future projects? You know, well, honestly, it's things like this. Like, I'll listen to a show, and I hear stuff that I like, and it, when that makes you on fire, you're like, oh, let's make some stuff like that. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? It's like every everything that you love, or I guess even things that you don't love, you'll be like, I don't want to make something like that. Like, everything that you feel around you that just inspires you, that is kind of like the, the cursor and the thing that pushes you into wanting to make something beautiful as well. I see, I see. Well, that's a, that's a good, so, you know, hopefully, I mean, obviously, this year has been, you know, just completely garbage. It's been a dumpster fire, really, um, with everything that's been going on this year. But, uh, you know, I know you're someone who uses your surroundings and your experiences as a motivation for your creativity. Um, have you seen anything that happened this year that 
uh, can be part of or be an inspiration for future uh, material? You know what? Um, when I have actually started writing a couple of uh, tracks for possibly a new album soon, and I haven't seen um, a direct reflection of exactly what's going on in the world yet, except maybe one track. But mm. um, yeah, I hope so, because this year has been really really crazy mm -hmm. so um, I'm sure it should definitely lend to having some good inspiration in that sense right you know what I mean yeah it has to uh, it, it would be a shame if, if I couldn't find a reflection of what's really going on I mean I would think that you know with obviously the um, everything that's happened from the pandemic to the uh, political madness that's happening there mm -hmm. maybe you know you you're always someone that's uh, positive in your in your um, offerings i would think that maybe this might be the callus for you to i don't know you know get a little more um maybe negative or uh political or you know just a, a little darker side negative of, of, of sharing well, you know you know i'm trying to think I don't think fans or people want to hear about politics in a um, in a freestyle song or a dance song. I mean, they could be, but I personally, in general, I personally, in general, don't like to mix music and politics because to me, music is the one place where I can, uh, you know, I guess kind of escape from it. And I, the only person I really talk to about politics with is just in the house. So, <laughs> <laughs> I keep so, the so, home, in the so, so, so Lenny's the lucky one that gets all the, all the real Sharon Masarin stuff. Yeah, totally. Uh, got you. Well, I mean, you know, Hey, you never know. I mean, you could be the, uh, the groundbreaker and maybe you could spark a new trend, uh, like, you know, political freestyle political freestyle you know I, I'm going to leave that to you <laughs> no. I'm going to let you have a new alias no, come not, out with some new freestyle not me I, I, I piss everybody off when I start talking about what I think because yeah. because nobody nobody wants common sense. Everybody wants you know just you know uh, self self uh, appeasing stuff. And you know life isn't self appeasing. You got to you got to deal with reality. And uh, a lot of yeah. people a lot of people don't uh, they don't like to hear that. You know. Well, so I mean, I'm trying to think. It's like when you have so much reality going on. So like say this whole year, 2020, mm -hmm. right? Do you want to feel? that reality as much in your music or do you want to have that time to have more fun and well, have more time to um kind of I, be I, free of that reality because you have it most of the day no i i get that but there's also you have to think there's also a, a demographic or a portion of people that are listening that kind of feel a little dis uh enfranchised or you know disconnected they they look for somebody that they look up to to have you know uh their same or or feel their same pain so you know they that you know they feel they're resonating uh or you know connecting with someone that's in a in a higher status yeah i definitely agree there could be some sort of reality or realism in the lyrics of new music that could describe what a lot of people are going through right now mm -hmm. which is you know the state of the world isn't always you know ideal at the moment right, right. there's a lot of stuff um you know with jobs with money with the fear of what can go on with the um the lack of connection and mm -hmm. just how you know you can't necessarily always see your relatives or you can't like um you know just do the normal things that we you know used to be able to do before march and um so that would that would be something that i could tap into but that's just because for me it's i'm always more into the emotional connection part of right songwriting and things like that you know, so how are you managing to stay sane in these, you know, like the, the you know, the isolation that we've had to endure over the, the past nine months? How have I been able to stay sane in the last nine months? Um, well, uh, first and foremost, I've just been very blessed in the sense that, you know, 
like I've been provided for in the sense that, you know, I still have my home, I, you know, and, um, and, you know, food on the table, things like that. Uh, food so by the way, food by the way that you don't go and get, you make Lenny go and get. No, no, no. I go to the grocery stores too. I'm lucky. What? Though, because... When did when did this start happening? <laughs> oh, sorry. Hold on one second, okay? Yeah. Okay, okay. Um, actually, because I have some of our uh, freestyle fans um, with me, okay. and yeah, and so if you guys want, if you want to hear the whole interview, it's over at wednesdayrex.com the link is over on my website so it's gonna be there okay so anyways yeah well it's it's up there now and also uh later on probably around midnight tonight the entire mm-hmm. show will be up at mixcloud.com forward slash yes. dj underscore casio yeah so if you go to my website go to the link right now you can hear the entire interview you just press play on the top right hand side and you just press play i was listening to all of dj casio's freestyle playlist it was so dope i was super stoked you guys have to listen to his um his show um and you yeah you can if you want to listen to the interview with him as well um go to the website wednesdayrex.com on my website so um back to your question about Mm -hmm. like staying sane and grocery shopping i'm very very lucky i I have a husband that um, does, like, so much stuff with me, so we will go get grab food together, blah, blah, blah. But um, back to uh, how I'm dealing with 2020. Right, right. Uh, like I said, I've just been blessed to have, you know, my home, we have food, blah, blah, blah. And so what I've been focusing on is finding my best way of um, – just letting my music and my business be the thing that thrived so that that's like what I do for the rest of my life. Like that's my focus. And um, so I've been um, trying to work on new music. I've been trying to work on my website, you know, um, interacting with the fans and like getting in touch with everybody. And that's just been my main focus. Is like I just want this to be my number one thing because before the pandemic happened that was my dream that was my goal is is for is to live my life making music and my ability to help people that be my mission Ah, i see i see mm -hmm. well you know what we're going to delve into a whole lot more uh building on that uh the the music and and the website and all that stuff because there's a couple things that have developed over the past couple weeks that uh, you notified me about. So we're going to talk about that. But the new album, 1111, is available everywhere right now. Um, It's a collection of exclusive remixes that Mm -hmm. um, were previously released, but now you can get them all in one collection without having to buy, you know, like 11 different uh, CDs. You can just get Mm -hmm. one one CD. Um, Are there hard copies going to be available? A hard copy for 1111? I'm not sure about that because there's at the moment there's 32 mm-hmm. tracks, so that would mean a I'm double not even sure. a double CD. Yeah, a double CD, and I guess I would need to know if the fans if that's like a high demand because right. you know with music it's like it's crazy. The world has changed so much. You know, we've gone from you know vinyl to CDs, uh, vinyl to tapes to CDs to um, you know mp3 downloads and then now like streaming so it's really it would have to be a big investment for me to know that that's something that people would need and once i feel the demand then i i would kind of think about that absolutely absolutely well you know what let's jump into one of the songs that's featured uh on the new album remember the remember the days the future remember retro the remix days. okay uh, I, that this one I, i'm uh that was one of the ones i i felt the most um, so let me let me run that. I want you to stay on the line, and we'll come back in a couple minutes and talk a little bit more. Keep you for just a few more minutes before I don't know. You have to go out and um, see what the moon looks like, or whatever it is that <laughs> you, you do up there in your uh, exclusive location. <laughs> okay. All right. Hold on the line. 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 That's right, back in the place right here. It is 90.9 FM KCC Radio Bilingue, yours truly, Casio in the building. 
and I am very lucky right now to still be talking to the one and only queen of dreams, the girl next door. She goes by the name of Sharon Masarin. Sharon. Sharon. Okay. Sharon, you there? Uh, one second. Let okay. me see. Are you there? I'm here. Are you here? I'm here. So if I'm here and you're, you're here, here, doesn't that make it our time? Uh, yes. <laughs> Certainly nothing wrong with little pizza on our time. <laughs> <laughs> She's probably like, I don't. what is he even talking about? I don't know what you're talking about. Fast times. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. We had pizza last time. <laughs> No, no, fast Who time. Wants pizza? Let's fast order pizza. No, no, no. Fast times. Ridgemont High. Oh, okay. You know the movie, right? Yes. Fast okay. time at, at Ridgemont High. Okay. You know when they he orders the pizza in the classroom, and the teacher oh. comes over and he, and the teacher's like, "Mr. Sir, what are you doing?" He's like, "Well, look, if I'm here and you're here, doesn't that make it our time?" <laughs> No, no, no. I don't remember the pizza scene. Okay, well, I can, I, I'm showing my age. Obviously, I'm a lot older than you are. So, <laughs> anyway, 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 we're talking in here. Uh, the new album, 1111, a uh, compilation mm -hmm. of previously released remixes, all in one collection, so you don't have to search around for stuff. What was the, uh, what gave you the idea to do this? Um, it was basically that, you know, we had, so many EPs and it just felt like it'd be easier to have them all on one album so um, just a few of the EPs had things that were like limited edition so you can't get those anymore but almost everything else like 99% of all of them are, are now rounded up so that if, if anyone wants those tracks now they're all available on one album okay got you you know I wanted mm -hmm. to ask you too um, Obviously, this being a compilation of um, previously released remixes that, you know, aren't available, you know, anymore, um, mm -hmm. as you said, um, was there ever an idea maybe to, because I'm sure you have them, there's got to be mm -hmm. at least an EP's worth or maybe even more of uh, remixes that no one's ever heard. Uh, was there ever a, an idea to put something like that out? An EP of stuff that no one's ever heard? Yeah. Yeah, I actually, I did. I released that on a very, very old, 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 old EP called um, Before Bedtime. So it was stuff that I had made prior to Always Dreamin', which is my first album mm -hmm. on Planet Hype that I worked mostly primarily with uh, producer Glenn Gutierrez. So, um, so it was kind of like stuff that I was rounding up before I ever did my first album and I got to work with Dajel Adabe who mm -hmm. worked with one of the freestyle artists in the Bay, Buffy mm -hmm. and so that was fun and I, I wish we would have done a freestyle track together for some reason we did a ballad <laughs> well, <laughs> which you know. is just kind of uh, too bad because he's a great producer as well so it would have been nice and then it had other um, it had like a Love High remix and the Always Dreaming remix by Joe Grandberg who I've worked with a lot on Sunkissed and The One. And also featured on that is one of my personal favorites is Don't Ever mm -hmm. Leave. Don't Ever Leave. Oh, I, yeah. I yeah. love that song. That, that's that's yes. that's a heater right there. Thank um, you. But, I mean, in the time between that and now, there must be, you know, a lot of, you know, secret uh, sharing stuff in the vault. I mean, how you know, secret. how many, uh, if you had to put a number on it, how many songs... Uh, that no one's ever heard, are there, you know, just, you know, in the vault? Songs that no one has ever heard. It's funny. Um, oh, you know what? There there were a bunch of songs that I wanted to put on the one. Um, let me see. <laughs> uh, there was a song, one of my favorites, so I might release it in the future. It's called Conversations, and mm -hmm. it goes... Um, you make me have conversations All of the things I say to you But now you've gone, yeah, you left me So all these words keep crashing through You make me have conversations All the things I hate to you songs like that i had a few that i didn't put on the one and damn i don't the, know why but damn this pandemic I'm, i so <laughs> want you here in studio to sing live for me again i so want that 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 good this damn pandemic 
Oh man. Uh, so conversations, um, any, um, but again, like, you know, if you had to put like a number on it, I mean, 10, mm. 20, 30, what are we looking at here? It's weird. I think I can't, I couldn't number how many songs that never made it, you know, into the sunshine. Um, but, uh, be- because the reason why is because let's see. I-, I don't know probably like in my mind it'd be like 50 okay. but in reality the thing is once they don't make it onto an album I only remember them once it's like oh no remember that song conversations like we have to put it out now you know something like that so I don't even remember them until it's like time for them to like be born and so you, you, don't, you, you don't ever think like, well, that doesn't fit this album, but let me keep that in mind for the next one. You just like have it there and you know, like when you are stumbling across, you go like, oh yeah, I remember that, that one. Yeah. Well, cause like, for example, on, um, what was it on always dreaming? I think I had already worked on, can you wait? And mm-hmm. then it ended up by the time I was working on my second album, I go, that would be a great song to like round out this album. So for the next album, it like came to me again so definitely you have to feel it in your heart where you're like hey don't don't forget don't forget me the song like kind of talks to you like that got you got you okay you ready for uh some just abstract questions because you know i got plenty of those too abstract questions okay (laughs) let's see (laughs) okay i know you are very into vacationing Vacation, uh, yes. What vacation spot did you have high hopes for and just turned out to be the biggest disappointment? Oh, wow. Um, um, I won't say the country. Um, wow. Well, then, that, come on. <laughs> come on. No, I, I don't want to because, you know, it could have been a bad day when I went to that country. But I'll just. I'll just tell you the experience that I had. I had okay. this dream of going to this country when I was a little kid, and I said, oh, that place must be so beautiful. I can't wait to go there. So I get there, and just imagine you're in the town, and there's, like, a town square. People will literally, like, run into each other. Like, they don't, you know, they don't know about personal space. And you're like, ow, ow. <laughs> you know? Right, right. It was things like that, and I was just so confused. And, you know, I'm so used to, like, customer service where you go into the store and like everyone's like hi how can i help you this and that and there was nothing like that at all so it, it just had this weird vibe and i said oh i used to love this place in my dream <laughs> you're like you're like okay well so much for that yeah yeah so every time someone goes oh i want to go there in my mind i go i don't I'm not sure you want to go there okay okay got you well you know uh, since I don't vacation anywhere outside the United States, I don't feel the need to uh, ever pick your brain and ask you that question again because I ain't going there. Uh, so it's all good. Um, what part of the creative process is your favorite and which part is your least favorite? Mm, what part of the creative process is my favorite? I would say overall it's the writing part. Mm-hmm. Because... Um, It's like you have these emotions in your heart and you have these thoughts on your mind. And it's almost like it's a way of writing your diary out loud. And I love having that power to do that. And what part is your least favorite? My least favorite part of the creative process? Yeah. Let's see. The least favorite part is also writing when you know you have you have this song you have this melody and you're going like la 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 and you're, you're, you're you got it and you just can't come up with it yet so it's like a struggle so that's like there's some songs that come out in five minutes and there's some songs you have the melody for a month and then finally you're like okay we got to write the song the album release is coming out now you, you got to finish it and then so you just do it and so um yeah, it's the part where you're like, come on, song, get out already, please. Okay, got you, got you. So the um, actual, the um, actual, uh, how, you know, to put it in a, um, you know, semi-crude way, the birthing of the song. The birthing. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a mother to many songs. I, I am a mother, yes, of music. <laughs> exactly, exactly. Okay, uh, 
What, um, let's see, where is it? I, I know I wrote it down here. Uh, okay, what sort of super things do super moons do? What were you talking Ooh. about that? What were you talking about right there? What super things do super moons do? Yeah. Have you ever felt the gravitational pull of the moon? <laughs> no, I'm too fat to feel any gravitational pull. <laughs> <laughs> there ain't nothing lifting me off the ground. Uh, well, I will just say that sometimes the moon makes people do super things, you know? It just well, depends give, on give, your mood give, on your day. Give me an example of a super thing that a super moon made you do. Um, The moon I sometimes made me feel more loving. Okay. Mm-hmm. So okay, so okay. So I feel closer to someone. Okay. Time. I got mm-hmm. you. I got you. So basically, it's just like a romantic thing. Yes. Okay. Got you. Got you. Um, last. Uh, well, I I know we're getting close to the end of the time here. Um, let's talk about uh, the VIP feature that you've implemented on the website. So talk to me the about VIP t- feature. Talk mm-hmm. to me about that. Okay. So on my website. Uh, at www.sharon.net um i have this new feature it's you know basically it's called my official friends and the reason why i made that is because i feel horrible about facebook only limiting us and capping us at 5,000 friends it like really sucks to me Mm -hmm. because um you know i i don't like to have to accept and have to decline. I wish that I didn't have to um, deal with that. So what I have done is I'm asking people to please follow me on Facebook so that I don't have to deal with that kind of um, decision because I don't want to have to de- deny anybody. And so I'm allowing and hoping that people will friend me on my website so that I can have all my you know, listeners, supporters, fans, friends, and whatever um, – friend me like in the place where I'm always going to be at which is my website and uh, that's where I kind of write notes for them as much as I can uh, and send them emails that way yeah uh, Facebook is very MySpace in that in that in that manner isn't it yeah I mean I'm not sure why they have to have a cap or or maybe not maybe not even oh wait a minute Friendster was 500 right Friendster, I don't remember any limit on Friendster. I think Friendster was five hundred. I think MySpace was uh, five thousand. Yeah, think. I mean, I know it's not a big deal to, to a lot of people, but for me, I um, well, just hate. I mean... Yeah, I just hate having to like, you know, there's there's like people just like in your inbox, and I just try my best to like leave a message on my bio, like please just follow versus add requests because you know well when you want to deny when, anybody when you're the queen of dreams you have to have unlimited access to your subjects <laughs> exactly you unlimited know. access so that's what i want maybe facebook can put a, a paid feature or something like that oh boy hey don't give them no ideas they make enough money. i know i know i'm kidding Facebook, freestyle Facebook. Well, you know, well, you know, this being the sixteenth interview that we've done, you you are the um, you are the most interviewed person I've I have on I've had on the show. Yes, sixteen interviews. I can't believe that. Yes, my God, since September of two thousand two. So, who knows? Thank you. Who knows what questions? I well, I still have a lot here left over, but uh, who knows what we could get into in number seventeen? That will be uh, in the future. Um, So, once again, uh, Sharon Masarin's new album, Eleven Eleven, available on all digital platforms right now: iTunes, Mm -hmm. uh, Amazon, all those Spotify, all those places. Um, uh, Compilation of your remixes from the. uh, from the the one album Mm -hmm. and um you know i think it's time we get into uh well actually go ahead and give out your social media contacts before i let you go okay so let's see my social media um if you guys want uh my facebook that all my friends are on with me right now it's facebook.com slash sharon with sarin um if you guys are not my friends just yet please hit the follow button and then you can friend me on my website at www.sharon.net 
S H A R Y N dot net. Sharon with Sharon on Instagram, Twitter. Does anyone tweet anymore? If anyone tweet, absolutely. Uh, oh, you do? Oh yeah. If anyone tweet, leave a comment below. Thank you, Tito Puente. Hi, Jalinsies. Oh. Everybody, blow up Sharon's Twitter and let her know Twitter mm-hmm. is still a viable uh, medium to promote. Is Twitter a thing? Comment down below if you guys are Twitterers. I should be better at YouTube, um, but if you guys are YouTubers, help me out. Tell me what you guys want to see, and I'll post more videos there, youtube.com slash Sharon with Sharon. And I think that's about it. I haven't gotten into TikTok. It's like, you know how... It's not, it's not exhausting, but it's like to give as much energy as I do, I can I can only do so much. And so I mostly stick to Facebook and Instagram. But, you know, the, the cool thing about this is like these are all free mediums. Uh, and for you being an independent artist, I mean, this is mm-hmm. a, a great, you know, I mean, I don't see why you wouldn't use all the platforms to promote yourself because each one has its own audience. And, yeah, you know. but like, okay, say for example, TikTok, like, that means I have to make another video doing, I don't know what, the same thing or a different thing, and it's like, I am already, I actually, you know, I always try to respond to all my, you know, followers and things like that, so I don't just post things and, like, not respond, so that's kind of my thing. Well, see, uh, I, so I, it makes it harder as well. I'm I'm uh, complete in the dark as far as how TikTok works. And so you basically, like, say you recorded, like, a 30-second video on your phone. Mm-hmm. And you can mm-hmm. post that on Instagram. You can post it on Facebook. You can post it on Twitter. You can't do that on TikTok? With TikTok, I think there's, like, okay, every website has its vibe, okay? I couldn't put even the same totally the same things that I put on Instagram on my Facebook because your Facebook people like when we're on Facebook, it's like, we want a certain thing. Right. Mm -hmm. And when you're on Instagram, you want a certain thing. It's just the way that it is. I, I, you could literally try posting the same material on the two websites, but Facebook has this kind of like, um, super personal vibe, you know, where you share, I don't know, just, way more of yourself I think and then with Instagram because it's more images and videos it's more of a visual thing Hmm. so your visuals have to be a little bit more popping and then on Facebook your personality or your vibe has to be more on point okay got you got you oh you know what I was going to tell you this too uh you know I know you're you're a uh, always a fashionable person and you like to play around with uh, different, you know, images and styles and whatnot. But mm-hmm. um, that video of you in the gray hoodie, that's the in one. In the gray hoodie? That's the uh-huh. one right there. That's <laughs> that's the one right there. That is so funny. Only reason I wore my little hoodie outfit yesterday is because it was cold, you know. Mm-hmm. And I was like, I'm really cold. This is what I'm wearing. I'm in the lockdown. I'm not going to, you know, put on what I think. A Sharon Mazarin outfit looks like I'm going to be totally real right now, and I'm going to wear my hoodie the way I wear it in the house with the hood on. Not and mad so at that at I all. Not mad that's at it. that at all. <laughs> you know, no no need for the neon colors. No need for the elegant uh, maroon dress. Just uh, <laughs> elegant maroon dress. Just oh just just, just just rock that gray hoodie, and it's good to go. The gray. Uh, I only have a few hoodies. Uh, I'm yeah. I wear I wear stuff like that in the house, mm, not okay. outside. Well, I um okay. Well, you know, that's your prerogative. You know, <laughs> I call you Bobby Brown. It's your prerogative. <laughs> but hey, you know what? Let's jump into let's uh bef- you know before I let you go, let's jump okay. into um Love Flows the Dreamwave remix. Love Flows Dreamwave, okay. And um you know once again I thank you so much for taking the time tonight. Um, Thank you. You know, as I always tell you, you know, time is money, and I don't have a lot of money, so uh, <laughs> we're <laughs> we're coming to the close here. But man, go out and get that eleven eleven album. 11-11. Pick it up on uh, Amazon, iTunes, Amazon, Sp- iTunes. Spotify, everywhere, Spotify, and yeah. and and definitely connect with Sharon on social media. She uh she appreciates all the fandom, all the love, and uh, she may even hit you back. <laughs> She may even yes, hit you back. Thank you. Thank you, Casio. I 
always have so much fun with you. Uh, I can't believe we're in 16 interviews. 16. In 16. Yep. Like, yeah. And then this this particular interview, I'm surprised because Casio is known in my circle as giving the most intense, striking, you know. <laughs> Oh, you, you don't you don't intense think interviews. you don't mm-hmm. think this was you don't think this was intense enough? Did I think it was intense? No, you, I, th- I thought it was super chill. I I was able to breathe on this. <laughs> I was like, uh, well, I like, mean, you know, I mean, okay, I'll 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 take notes on that and I'll uh, I'll make it more intense than number seventeen. Yeah, <laughs> more intense. You you're gonna um, you're gonna feel like you have a lie detector on. Yeah, I'll, if you get more intense, I'll bring wine or something or ice cream. Oh, wine and ice cream. There's a combination <laughs> for you. That's a that's a combination almost as uh, out there as Starla and Vega. <laughs> Starla and Vega. <laughs> no, but for for real though, for real though, I always appreciate. I always have fun having you on the show, and um, thank yeah. you so much for taking your time. Um, and uh, let's go into love flows. All right. Thank you guys, and thank you for listening. <laughs>